In this episode, all-American classic apple pie, but not just no regular ordinary one, no it's not. Got a salted caramel mixed in there with it, two kinds of apples, and the best buttery flaky pie crust you're ever gonna see. This is how you top off dessert at every meal with a homemade apple pie. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by Camp Jiminy. Christmas, it's nearly Christmas, but it's Thanksgiving. And what are we still talking about this week? Because last week you might have missed it. What? Our three perfect sides for the Thanksgiving dinner. But we are carrying on that tradition too. And what are we talking about? A salted caramel apple pie. What's more American than apple pie? Baseball and cowboy Kent Rollins. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about, folks. Let's make some apple pie. Pie crust. Now, I'm not talking the ones that come in the little box that you find in the aisle at the grocery store. Sure, I have used a bunch of them I have, but we're talking about making something that's buttery, that's flaky, that's, ooh, so goodness. And I'm going to tell you what, the ice box is your pie crust best friend. Now, to start this off, about an hour before you even get ready, I need you to get you some of that Crisco that's in one of them little deals and just toss it in the freezer part. Uh-huh. It's got to chill really good. And the butter got to be so, so cold. Even helps what? If your flour is cold, it even makes a difference because you're gonna get all that flakiness and that butter's gonna stay in there. It's gonna be really good. So to start out with, we're gonna add some all-purpose flour. So we're gonna add that flour, the least amount that we can put in there, which is about two and a half cups. A good shaking of cinnamon, and if you don't like cinnamon, you don't have to put it in there, but I sort of like what it does to the crust, and some salt. We're gonna mix all that in there really well. And your baking powder. Oh yes, and the baking powder. Thank you, Shan. You know, I want you folks to know, none of this would be possible without this beautiful lady behind the camera and her good camp security dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all mixed in there well. You can see that there is some, I wanna show you some breeze blowing today. So <laughs> we'll have to be a little careful. Now, chilled butter is hard to really maintain out here in mother nature's kitchen sometime, unless it's freezing. But I like to cut it to where it's pretty thin, or if you've got it really cold, or you want to drag it out of the freezer to use it, use a cheese grater. It will work really well as well. So my butter is not as chilled as it once was because here it is, nearly 80 degrees on this day. And the Crisco, same way. I like to keep it as cold as I can, and we're gonna cut it in slices similar to the butter. And you know what comes next? Either two forks, a fork and a knife, or a pastry cutter. And let's cut all this little fat into that little flour. Cracker crumb consistency see, it is. Okay. Just sort of like cracker so it's got crumbs. Some chunks, uh -huh. but that's that butter and that Crisco lard. Mm-hmm. And that's what's gonna make all this flakiness and get this to pop here in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and you gotta have ice water. Yes. Thank goodness to ice, I have some ice water. And we're gonna add a fourth of a cup. But we're just gonna do it in increments to where we ain't oversaturating the whole market at one time. So I like to just get it all the way around here a little. Go ahead and go to folding that in as you go. And you can see it start to balling up just a little in different places. We're gonna add a little more. Keep stirring it around, folding it in. The rest of the water goes in for the time being. They may be a little more here before we're through. But y'all ever heard of vodka in your pie crust? Now, I have heard of it, never used it, but the alcohol in there is, would help sort of do away with some of this I ain't gonna rise stuff and make it pop a little bit more. The same thing applies to if you use what, Shan? Apple cider vinegar. And since we're making apple pie, what would be more appropriate than apple cider vinegar? It's gonna help that crust puff up. And so flaky? Uh-huh, like flaky, flaky. So pour you a little of that in there, keep stirring. When you get ready to where you can put your hands on this, you want it to be wet, but you don't want it to really stick to you. So you can see as we pull that up, it's sort of all still together, and that's what we're after. Because we're not going to need this dough. We just want to make sure that it stays together really well. So out of there it comes. 
Oh, excuse me, Shan. <laughs> That's just the way it happened today. The wind is out of the southwest, if y'all are guessing. So I need you just to make sure that it sort of gets coated with flour. And if Shan will zoom in here, I want you to be able to see these little flecks of butter that are still left in here. And ooh, that is what we would call mm -mm, some of that good. Now I need you to sort of, I, I love to do it this way. I love to make it into a brick. And then we're going to cut it in half. Get this pie dough made because it needs to chill at least two hours in the ice box. Now you can let it go 24, but it's got to chill, folks. That's what's going to make things right. Cut her smooth in half. Go ahead and ball this up on this side. And we have two little discs of dough here, and they're going to get wrapped and set in the ice box. Well, apple peeling time it was. I used to be a championship apple peeler with a wooden stick. My grandpa would give me one of them hits and get after it. Didn't work well, but I learned a lot about peeling apples. Now you can see we have combined apples. Yes, we have, because I think that brings out the most flavor in an apple pie. Get them all peeled, cored up good, sliced pretty well uniform in size, so everybody's gonna have the same bite. And then what comes next? We talking about some sugar. How about that much, uh-huh, which is the right amount. And we're gonna put some brown sugar in it too, because I like the flavor that it brings to some apples. Mm-hmm. And then, some flour not all of it yet i want you to go to tossing them apples in there to give them a really good coating then we're going to add a little cinnamon give it a little mixing what is next a little more of that flour and something that i really think is going to help set this up and make it more caramely and more goodness mm -hmm. a little bit of cornstarch about a tablespoon full. Give it one more really good mixing and something that we gotta have in there that's gonna protect these apples and give them a little tartness too to make them sit there and pay attention. It's a little bit of lemon juice. Don't take much. Well, two hours it has been and our dough is chilled up and set well. And I think you can see them little chunks of that good Kerrygold butter sitting in there thinking, mm, 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 I wanna make a pie crust. So just flatten it a little with your hand and then just take that rolling pin and let's try to make it round. Look at all that, that butter in there. Roll. Oh my gosh, that butter that is like good. A circle right off the bat. I got pretty close. Now, you could cook this in a regular pie pan. You could at 375 degrees in the oven, probably 50 to 55 minutes. But guess what? Today, we're using the ever popular 10 inch cast iron oven. We are. Now, it is the perfect size to make pie in. But if you ain't got one of them and you have a 12 inch oven, a pie plate will fit right inside that. So you're pretty good to go. Now, cold dough, so nice. I need you just to take it. I like to bring mine right back up here like this. Move our little oven over here. Try to put that in the center and then just go to lifting the dough up to where you can get the bottom in here without a crease. Now it's a little harder in a Dutch oven than it is a pie pan, but you can see as we roll that up there, really how thick that crust is. And that is what I like. I like a good, really thick, good crust on the bottom. Pie dough is ready. It is in the pan. What? Them apples. And look, see how them sort of just made their own little juice and liquid here? Another jumper. Oops. Get back in there. So just go ahead and let's get them laid up in there. Now you be thinking, hey, that's a lot of apples. You, it's sort of like y'all see me cook with meat, ain't you? You ain't got to look for an apple in an apple pie. I want there to be an apple in there. We're going to pack them and sort of put them in there in the right accordance. Let's get that caramel sauce over here and we'll get it in the apples. The caramel sauce. We call it easy caramel sauce. We is because really all it is butter, cream, cornstarch, white sugar, brown sugar, a little vanilla. Give it a little stir and let it come up there till it gets good and thick. And we're going to what? Add us a little salt because remember, we said salted caramel. Now, if you're using this kosher sauce, and this is really coarse, I would say probably maybe a half a teaspoon, teaspoon, half a tablespoon to start with. We're going to give it a stir and we're going to taste it because I want to get that sweet, but I want to get that salt also. So let me have a little. Mm. Adam. Already? Whew, that stuff right there should be at the state fair, I'm telling you. Now, let's go ahead and drizzle us a half a cup on here. You want to? And we're just going to eyeball it, folks. You tell me when you think it is a half of a cup. 
we're gonna put us a pie crust on top. We're gonna break out a little cowboy craftsmanship here and do us a latticed weave cross all the way across through there. Now, lattice work ain't real pretty, but ooh, it sure is tasty, and I'll give you all the tips and tricks I know on it anyway. So let me get that dough rolled out and on the top. Well, we got her on a trivet, and what are we using? A five inch trivet. Now, you don't know the wind is blowing pretty hard out here today. You've seen the flyer leaving. So cold placement is pretty light and not directly ever under a pie when you're baking, but on the outside edge. And we'll have to do plenty of rotation on this the way the wind's blowing. We may even have to pull some heat back every once in a while. But you wanna start out pretty slow, let everything gradually warm because when you're pre, Heating an oven at home, it ain't the same out here. We cannot preheat that cast iron and then put a pie crust in it. We have to start from just room temperature and go from there. So everything's got to warm up a little, then things will go to baking and we'll show you a little trick that's really always worked for me on how does that crust feel around the edges to know that the bottom is done. Now you can see I got them coals raked right to the edge of that Dutch oven. Why is that, Major? Why? Major says, I do not know. Well, Dad's gonna tell you, Major. You can see how that is browning in the middle and we need it to brown around the outside edge. Now, while we got that off, I remember I showed you, told you I was gonna show you a tip and a trick to know when that pie crust is near done on the bottom. Put your finger over here and see how much give that crust got in it going down. It needs to be to where it's pretty well set and it don't have no, I really wanna mash down to it. We like a little, we're gonna to try to brown that top up evenly. We'll get that bottom done and then we're gonna let it cool. Folks, I want you to look in here and see the layers in this pie crust. That's what we're calling the flaky goodness of pie crust. Now, my helpers really don't like apples, but they like pie crust, they do. So, Big, I need you to tell me, is this worthy of setting on the table at Thanksgiving? Whoo, he says, yeah, Dad, it'll be good. How about you, Duker? And where is little Mage? Mage says, I've never had apple pie crust. Sadie's napping. Sadie is napping. Everybody got a bite. Folks, ain't that pretty? And look at this edge right here. See that? This, I mean, look at this pie crust on the Ooh, bottom. That's professional. I mean, that is what you call, I got lucky. Uh-huh. In the wind, I did. I had a fork one time. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you something you need to know right off the bat with this pie. When you cook it, if you're going to have it that night, cook it that morning. This pie needs to set at least four hours to set up, congeal, and everybody be just right. We rushed ours a little today because you can see sunlight is fading, but let it set four hours. Keep everybody out of it. Don't even let them touch it. I am going to have me a piece of this. Get me some of that pie crust with them apples. And you've seen us drizzle that caramel sauce right on the top of it. Mm. Oh. My goodness gracious, praise the Lord, pass the biscuits, but first pass the pie with the salted caramel. Mm. One more bite, I had to kick start it in. I'm gonna do the apple picking off the tree. Get over there. I love me some of them apples, apples, apples. Mm. Whew, apple time. But remember, be thankful, be giving, be sharing. That's what it's all about. Bring in a crowd, feed them a bunch, pass them the apple pie, and then charge them $12 and say, see you next week. No, I'm just kidding. As always, I tip my hat to all the service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying over camp up there. It is a great thing. We never take that for granted. As for the rest of you, go ahead and lift your glass and lift it high. We're going to have a toast. It is Thanksgiving, and I think we need one. There are good ships, and there's wood ships, and there are ships that sail the sea. But the best ships are friendships, and may they always be. 
because y'all are not only mine and Shan's friends, y'all are our family. We love you each and every one. We are so glad to have you. And come on in here close, because guess what? God bless you one and all, and I'll see you down the buttery, flaky pie crust apple pie trail. Ready, ready? Whenever you're ready. Woo, thank you. Give me, after you I'm age. You're gonna have to move, buddy. Mom! Hey.